church. I want to welcome you all, those who are watching online. I want to welcome you in today's Sunday service. And I want you to call a neighbor. You can call a neighbor. You can call a friend. And you leave your comment, like, and then share. And the one thing I want to tell you is, the only thing I can tell you in the situation we are in is that the love of God never fails. It never gives up. And it never runs out of us. So that's what you should know in this situation.
operate the love of God because it never fails. It is our strength. The love of God is our strength. It is our power. When we cannot move, it can push us. It can take us far. The love of God never fails on us. It is our strength. The Lord is our strength. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, King of glory, because you are our strength, O oh God. You are our life, O oh God. You are the strength like no other. You are the strength like no other, Jesus. That's why we worship you, Jesus. That's why we magnify your name, O oh God, because you are our strength, O oh God. You are our strength, O oh Jesus.
we have in Christ Jesus. We are confident that we will see the beauty of tomorrow. We are confident that we will see Jesus reign in our lives, in our families, every day, in, every, in our finances. We are confident that we will see Him because He lives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. It's such a beautiful Sunday morning. And we bless the name of the Lord because you are watching from wherever you are. I am happy to come to you. My name is Ruth Sentamu. And I am blessed to be here talking to each one of you. I hope you're all well. And I hope you enjoyed the worship session. You're very welcome, online viewers from wherever you are. I know people are um, watching from their living rooms. I know people who are watching from their cars. They're driving maybe to, to the supermarket. I know some of you are watching from, I don't know where. You can type in the chat where you're watching from. But I know the Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is blessing you because you're watching this video. I want to read us a scripture in First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 11. It says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek, seek his face evermore. In everything, whatever situation you feel like you are going through, whatever it is, just seek the Lord. And I know you will find him because he is right there waiting for you to just call on him and say, Hey God, I need some help here. And he will render his hand and reach out to you and help you. Um, this is the Christ Life Church online feed. And I am happy to be the one hosting. I want to send out greetings to all the people who are watching, wherever you are. I love you so much and I pray that the Lord God may bless you so much. So at CL, at the Christ Life, we are happy to, and to let you know that we have MC Live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And on um, Sundays, we will be coming to you live at 10 a.m. So every Sunday, you can watch and be blessed. Before I forget, greetings to my husband. He's in Rwanda. Yes, I had to increase out that one. <laughs> yeah, he's blessed. We believe that uh, each one of you are blessed because you give, because of your generosity. So at this time, there is numbers on your screen. You can please um, punch in those numbers into your mobile money and send in your offering. You just have to look on your screen, get the number and Give in the house of the Lord. Be a blessing to this ministry. And the good Lord will bless you. So as you give, as we go ahead to give, the choir is going to give us a hymn as you give. May the good Lord bless you. We love you so much.
we want to bless the Lord for this lovely Sunday that he has given us. Uh, we are so proud, we are so a pleasure to have you watch uh, this clip. And I believe that you and your family shall be blessed. Amen. I'm David uh, Waswa, pastor at the Christ Life Church here. I want to bless the Lord for the music, the worship, the praise, you know, the hymn, uh, the old rugged cross. I believe as they sang a song, you sang along with them, and you also uh, got your phone and, you know, send in your offering and your tithe and your seed, whatever, uh, to really to thank God and to bless the Lord. Amen. It has been a blessed week here and uh, I, I see an outflow of healings all over the place. I've been reading newspapers today and reading the doctor's reports in the hospitals and they are saying that people are no longer getting sick and people are being healed and we have every reason every reason to praise the Lord for that. Amen. You know sometimes when you concentrate on the negative news, uh, you think that things are bad. Things are not bad. Things are good. God is at the throne. God still reigns on high. Amen. And well, I want to, to stand with you uh, who is suffering, who is sick in hospital, and we believe that you'll be fine. In Jesus' name, maybe you have someone in, in hospital, a family member, a child, a parent, a friend, a relative. Yeah. There's an out, outpouring of healings all over the place. So just just uh, just plug in, just plug in your portion and take it. It is yours. Healing is yours. Amen. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to share with us uh, today, uh, just to encourage someone today who is uh, uh, watching and listening, whatever time, wherever you are, I believe this message. Uh, yeah, God wants to, to speak to someone. Today, praise the Lord. It's a, in form of a question. Will you be someone for another? Every person needs someone they call someone. You know, everyone in, in the world needs someone they call someone. Like even when you are talking and jazzing with your friends, you say, ah, I have this friend. I have someone. Who knows about everything going on in my life? So, will you be that someone for another? Amen. Uh, I have a story I want to share with you guys. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a twin, so I have a twin brother. Uh, of late, we don't look really so alike. But uh, those years, I think we did because of conditions. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but I can't forget being a twin and uh, going to the same schools, especially primary school, uh, you, in, uh, you are in a boarding school, very far away, very, very far away in the, in the up country. And boarding and the situations are really not so good. I really, every time I ask my dad, why, why did you choose those schools? Uh, you know, what they are the good schools? Why did you choose to take us to the deep in the village schools? You know, but, Childhood was so, so much interesting. You know, we are so swift, we are so so dark, so small, and we would run all over the place, sweat all over the place, and uh, really, you know, sweat like the whole day you are sweating. I don't know if kids these days really sweat like we did. I I, I, I doubt, really, I doubt. Amen. But uh, number one, I, I think I was more stubborn than my brother because me, I used to receive. Those the kids, eh? you know, the teachers used to uh, to have the days, a specific day of the week for just spanking, just beating. <laughs> Amen. I can't forget. It used to be a Friday morning at ten in the morning. So when the bell rings, ta, ha, you just know assembly. So at that assembly, the teachers make a line, and every teacher has a stick. So they they just read your name, whatever whatever crime you did. If you if you, you forgot uh, if you dodge preps, you, you you lie down. So you go. This one spanks you. This one spanks you. Like the whole line of teachers, you know. Whatever the crime was, whether you missed a, a class, whether you you failed a number. By the way, imagine even failing a number. You know, one one new spanking. You know, whatever the crime was, whether you had lost something. I can't forget. You know that Friday morning when uh, they bring lost and found uh, items, slippers, and your name is written there, David. You just get ready. <laughs> you just get ready, you come, 
And uh, personally, I had a book, I had a small exercise book where I used to write the number of canes they give me per day. And uh, you know, us boys in the, in, in the dormitories would, uh, at the end of the term, would bring all our books and we say, who, who is the winner? Who got, who got more sticks than the other? Ah, man, childhood is so, is so interesting. By then, I don't encourage spanking. I don't encourage really, uh, what is it called? Um, that one. I don't encourage that one. So, but what happened? I, I can't forget one time, I don't remember the crime I did. So, I was ready for the spanking. But that time I said, I'm going to hide. I'm not going to the assembly. I'm going to hide. <laughs> As a young boy, and do you know where I, I hid? I hid at the mattress. <laughs> Outside, you know, you know, people used to, small boys used to, to put mattresses out to dry. So I went under a mattress, someone's mattress, and I hid. But is, is that really hiding? I, I really don't know if that is really hiding. But what happened? So they, they look for me all over the, they read my name, I'm not at the assembly. You know, so they find my twin brother, they bring me asking. I, you guys, aren't you the one? He says, oh, I'm not the one, I'm not David. You know, for him it's called uh, Grace. So, he said, I'm Grace. So, where's David? So, David hid the whole day. Amen. But I'll tell you, if you have someone who thinks about you, this is what happens. Even when I was hiding, my, bro my brother was the one, like, uh, around. Somehow, somewhere, he used to do something to hide me. Somewhere, somehow. Maybe he would tell them, uh, you know, something, whatever he used to, I don't know. And I, I remember that day I hid until 6 p.m. And you know 6 p.m. is time for supper. So I never knew that this brother of mine had gone to the dining hall and picked two plates of food. You know, it was even illegal to take two plates of food. I don't know how he did, whether he missed or something like that. So he had kept food for me. Amen. So when keep, after keeping food for me, and somehow he knew that I was hiding somewhere in the mattresses. Somehow he knew. So I was there around 6 p.m. there. He comes and says, man, you come. The teachers already have gone home, so you come and eat. It's now well. Praise the Lord. So I went, and I was eating. And the teacher came and said, now I have got you. But I told him, but I'm not the one. <laughs> so he, said, he told my brother, but are you the one? He said, my brother said, I'm not the one. So both of us were saying, I'm not the one. So the teacher was left there wondering, now who is who? Praise the Lord. But that story gets me thinking, how can I be hiding and someone is thinking about getting food for me? And I'm hiding because of obvious reasons. I've, I've really wondered really seriously. I've lost a book. I don't have pens. Me, me, I would go back home in holidays without books, without pens, without anything. Even I, I can't forget that, that visiting day when my mother came to school. And I had no shoes, so I had borrowed, I had borrowed in court someone's shoes, and both shoes were right hand, right handed, different sizes. <laughs> Just make sure that when my mother sees me, she finds me shoes. So I don't know how the things used to get lost, I don't know, but you know, being a child is so good. Because you are genuinely losing things. You are genuinely careless. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That school was called Kisozi Boarding Primary School. It's one of the best schools that, that you can ever go to. Deep in the villages, a place called Gomba. Village, real village life. Praise the Lord. But I think God was making me. I can't regret. Praise the Lord. And that tree I told you about, the tree where I went for caning was called the bloody tree. They named it bloody tree. Really bloody. Amen. But in my bloody moment, my brother was thinking about getting food for me. Because he knew I had missed lunch because of hiding. Amen. How many of us are hiding, by the way? And no one, you think no one is caring about you. Amen. So many, so many of us are hiding. Maybe not really physically hiding, but hiding in our situations. Maybe something has hit you so hard, and you really think and feel no one is really caring about you. So when disaster strikes, that time disaster strikes, our natural response tells us no one is caring. We actually even go to Facebook and post, no one is caring about me, I am alone. But you are not. You are not alone. Praise the Lord. You see, even in a country, when, when a lockdown comes, companies come out to, to, to fight for their people. You know, like now, doctors are working uh, tirelessly 
That means you are not alone. Doctors are working, by the way, to make sure that everything is fine. Praise the Lord. So many people stay up in line to work for you because they feel you have to be in a better place. Government is working. Amen. But is it enough? Praise the Lord. Amen. So what happens when disaster strikes? A friend will come on to say, I'm going to support you. Somehow, somewhere. Amen. And those are the people we see with our, our own eyes. And right now in our country, Uganda, there's what we call essential workers. So now essential workers are the, the thing to, to, because they have given up their, their lives, they are re risking to go in danger places to make sure that the people home are safe. Some of the essential workers, we have the doctors, uh, the drivers, the people that do the market, uh, the markets, sell them in the markets, uh, whatever. You know, those people who work in the, really, really the front line of situations. Praise the Lord. So those, we call them essential workers. But I'll tell you, there's an essential worker that is not seen with your own eyes. Many of us are here, but we don't know that there, there are some essential work, workers working for us, but we don't see them with our eyes. And you know them? Those are the prayer warriors. Yeah. The people who are praying for us. Me, every, every time I sit down, I say, hey, sometimes I will never know the people who are praying for me. You will never know the people that are praying for you. But people are praying. Some people are at the mountain praying, saying Uganda will be safe. Africa will be safe. The world will be safe. This thing will not kill you us. So, there's someone who is praying whole night, whole day for you. I can't, I can't forget that story of a, 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 a known story of an old woman who went to heaven. And we're reaching heaven, Jesus hugged her so much. And the woman told Jesus, but I, I, I've not been a singer. I've not been a, really a preacher so much. And Jesus told him, no, I saw your prayers. We are praying for the saints. Well done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, we have someone who is praying for us. But even if your friend, your physical friend is not praying for you, God, Jesus, is in for you. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, prays for us, intercedes for us to the Father. Every moment, you are not alone. Amen. A story is told uh, in John chapter 11. Verse 3. You know some guy called Lazarus gets sick. You know that story. After Lazarus gets sick, I think eventually he died. And But even, even, even when Lazarus was sick, the Bible says, verse 3, So Mary and Martha sent someone to tell Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Do you know, Lazarus never knew that someone was working for him. He never. But someone send someone to someone to make sure that Jesus understands that Lazarus is sick. So someone went to Jesus on behalf of Lazarus and Jesus responded because someone went to him on behalf of Lazarus. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask a question. Who are you going to Jesus on, you know, are you really going to God on behalf of someone? Are you really praying for someone? Are you really lifting someone in prayer? Are you really caring for someone in this moment? Would you be someone else's someone? Can someone in hospital really confidently say, my church is praying for me? Can someone at home confidently say, my mother is praying? Can your child confidently say, my mother is praying for me? Are you doing it? If you're not doing it, this is a time. Be someone else in someone. I want to tell you this world will be a better place. That bloody tree, that bloody moment someone goes through, if they have people who they know that they're really taking care of, of them, praying for them, the world will be a better place. Praise the Lord. And one thing we have to do is, you have to let someone know that you're praying for them. Yeah. It is so encouraging for someone to tell you, David, I'm praying for you. It is so encouraging. You feel you have a partner you are going with through life. Praise the Lord. I can't forget that day when I got an accident and uh, everything was shattered, the car and everything apart from me you know, and the phone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, 
uh, that very minute as the accident ha was happening, uh, after it had happened, I go to the police, I receive a mobile money message on my phone from a friend of mine, he's a pastor called Tony. So he sends me mobile money. So I, I'm like, how did this guy know that I'm in problems right now? Praise the Lord. So I keep quiet. So days later on, I never told him that I had gotten a problem. What he does, um, uh, so uh, I call him afterwards. Like three days later, I call him, I tell him, Pastor, you know what? I got an accident on this day. And that was the moment you sent me mobile money. Do you know what he told me? He told me that morning the Holy Spirit put you on my heart. And I felt like praying for you. So in the morning, at, because I got the accident at 7.30 sharp. I can't forget the time. 7.30 sharp in the morning. It was even raining. So this guy begins to pray for me at 6. He prays for me at 7. 7.30 he says, ah, I've prayed enough. Let me send mobile money to the person. I'm praying for. So that's how the money came. And that money helped me by that to do the police work and everything to do with the accident. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, sometimes we, people go through life thinking they are alone. It is so important that you tell someone that I'm with you. It is so encouraging that you, 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 you thank, even thanking, thank someone. Tell them, I appreciate the, the song. You did so well. I appreciate the worship. It, it did me so well. I appreciate the testimony. That testimony really did me so well. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. So, also put, put your prayer in action. When you put your prayer in action, you get a phone call and call. And also give and support. Sometimes we are in traffic jam and everyone wants to go to their home. And an ambulance is behind you, your car. And you really can't give space to that ambulance. Just put your prayer into action. Give space to that ambulance. Let it pass. Because you don't know what is going on in that ambulance. But maybe what I do when I find ambulances, I give way, but I also pray. I even raise my hands to it. I say, whatever is going on in that ambulance, I declare healing in that machine, in Jesus' name. When they reach hospital, that patient will be much better. Because I realize I'm a vessel. I can be someone for someone anonymous. Sometimes you don't need to know everyone you are praying for. Amen. So give that ambulance way. I want to read this scripture lastly, even as I wind it up. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Uh, in the New King, New King James Version. Romans 8, 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. So in your weaknesses, when you think like, like you are alone, Someone is caring, and that is the Holy Spirit. The things you cannot care about, for him, he does. He cares. He helps us. Help. The real help. In our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. How come? You know, for us, we think the Holy Spirit is just, they are just cheering with God in heaven. But the Holy Spirit is God. So, it is like God really say, saying, me, I'm, my eyes are on you all the time. You are covered all the time. Praise the Lord. So, verse 27. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when God is, is in need, for him, his will, he prays with his will because he's God. You understand? For you may pray complaining. You may pray and like you are thinking other things. You are complaining, maybe people have not come to help me, but now how can I help? How can I help when someone is not helping me? But God does it for you all the time. In your weakness, he does it for you. In your infirmity, he does it for you. When no one else is there, he does it. Even when the whole church is not praying for you, God is there to care about you. His love draws you closer. It, it is his will for you to be well. It is not your own will for you to be well. It is his will for you to be well. Amen. It is his will that you be made well. Last Sunday we shared that story about the lame man. That man at the pool. Jesus asked him that very important question. Would you love to be made well? That means Jesus came with a willingness. 
But this guy, this guy's mind thought, told him that, ah, uh-uh, maybe Jesus cannot do this thing. Maybe he can't. But I'll tell you, it is Jesus' will that you be made well. So can you say yes to him? Can you receive him and receive the help he's giving you? Amen. So the point I made today is, be there for someone. Choose to be there for someone. But if, even if you don't feel like someone is there for you, Jesus is there for you. Praise the Lord. Like the song we sang, the old ragged cross, that on that cross he gave it up for you. Just to be there for you. He gave it all to be there for you. Praise the Lord. I want to, I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Christ today, if you don't know Christ, and you love to know this man who gave it all for you. You want to have a relationship with him. Amen. You may be lost, but he is willing to come and draw you. His love is, the, is a drawing love. He does not condemn you. He does not condemn you. But he rather wants to give you life. Can you receive him in your life? And your life shall be totally different. Can we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. The Bible says, Psalms 119, verse 130, that at the entrance of your word brings light, O King of Kings, Lord. We thank you that your word is light. Your word is life, O God. Father, I pray that someone watching here, maybe they are sick at the hospital, I declare life, I declare healing. Maybe someone is suffering, maybe someone is in lack, maybe someone is looking around for someone to be lifting them in prayer, and they're not there. Father, I pray that you, you, you show them Reveal to them that your ever-present help is there for them. You are our refuge. You are our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. I want to thank you. Thank you for watching. Share this page. Share this video. And the Lord will be blessed. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.